That's why they put them up and they were always full. Um, so, uh, February of 93 now, to, uh, I think about it 10 years later than, than uh, when I, when I, uh, you know, when Beirut happened, just, just hit me that it was 10 years later. Uh, I was in the 25th floor of One World Trade Center when the cargo van blew up. And, uh, you know, that was worse getting out of the buildings than 9-11 because people don't realize it was because of the first bombing that they put in emergency lighting, they put in extra, well, you know, they had to, they, they, it was a wake-up call. It was a wake-up call. And our mayor at the time, Rudy Giuliani, knew it and, you know, because of what happened then, 9-11, uh, which I'll get into later, uh, was an easier exit. And I, and I was coming down from the 55th floor on 9-11. So, uh, 93, the bomb blows up, smoke's coming up through the towers, nobody knows what the hell's going on, excuse me. It's, uh, it's middle of winter, it's February in New York, it's miserable out, and you're just climbing down these stairs. And uh, as most of you veterans remember from either boot camp or active duty, you know, when you're in tight confines with other men, ring, ring, reach out and touch someone. And that's what I kept yelling to everybody. Because everybody was all in mist because the, 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 the smoke was coming up and they didn't know what was going on. So I kept, I remember I kept yelling, ring, ring, reach out and touch someone. So everybody had a, had a buddy in front of them so they can follow them out. So, uh, yeah, so 93, uh, six people were killed. Um, six Americans, and uh, you know it was uh, it was harrowing. It was it was no it was no it was no cakewalk. So you don't know where the hell you're going. The smoke's coming up. You know the fire trucks are coming. You know, God knows. So luckily I uh, I got out. I was with my brother, by the way, who I worked with on Wall Street for over 20 years. Um, so you know after that. Um, I do remember being more aware and, and realizing that, you know, having that sneaking suspicion, like, you know, this is only just another step towards, I don't know, coming to get us or, you know, whatever it is. So, um, 90s go along, it's now 2001, and uh, it was a beautiful weekend. Uh, I remember that because I was, uh, I took the Monday off. 9-11 was on a Tuesday. I took the Monday off, which is a big deal, especially when you work with your brother. Uh, I took that Monday off because, you know, you don't all of a sudden have the flu after a beautiful weekend. And uh, I was dating a nurse at the time, so it was a great weekend. Um, memories that come back. I haven't told my story in a while. So to uh, Tuesday morning, to, uh, to make it even worse, I remember showing up to work late. Took the bus in the next morning and uh, got to the towers. And you know, the thing about the towers, if you've never been there or never got an opportunity, you know, you were always enamored by the, by the, the enormous size of these, of these towers. It was just, I mean, you know, a, a glimpse is this giant tree here, but it was, and you never thought for a minute. And, and if, even, if the thought even came to your mind that if they were going to topple or whatever, you would always just assume they go this way. I mean, I, um, got to work about 8.30, and I remember slinking into my office with my black coffee, and I was looking, so I was in Tower 2, right? Tower 2. Tower 2 was the second building to get hit, but the first to go down. And I was on the 55th floor at Garban Securities. And uh, my view from my office was directly north. It was such a clear, calm day. I could see the, George, the traffic on the George Washington Bridge crossing, I think it was about 15, 16 miles away from Lower Manhattan. So. So, uh, yeah, yeah you, you always try to remember the funny times, right? So, um, watching the traffic go, and uh, all of a sudden, the back end of the first plane just boom. That was it. So, I'm looking north, I'm in the second tower. The view that I have is of the uh, 
George Washington Bridge, and Tower One. That's it. And I'm looking, drinking my coffee, thinking about the great weekend I just had with this nurse. And the back end blows. And my brother, who was in front of me, when it hit, I mean, it's, it's indescribable. I mean, you know, you guys that were in, I was never in combat. I've never experienced trauma like that. But, uh, you know, it goes without saying, it was, it was horrific. And there it is, it blows up in front of you. And he turns around, and you stumble to your feet, and you're looking out at the, you know, the, the debris. And uh, all I know is grab your wallet, grab your keys, let's get the hell out of there, just like we did in 93. Um, so I head out the office, I head down the hallway, People aren't sure what's going on, and you know, they're mumbling, there's a Piper Cub, they don't know what's going on. There's a small plane, I'm like, there's no small plane. Whatever, if, if it was a plane, who the hell even knows what it is? Let's just go. So as I'm heading towards the elevators, I look around and my brother is still back in the office. And he described it later, um, he described it later, uh, it was like being on um, uh, gas, if you ever, I don't know, if you ever been to the dentist and they give you gas for the, for the big, for the big stuff, you're just, yeah, you're drunk. So I go back, and uh, all I'm thinking about is my old man, and I've already mentioned before, sorry to use the word hate, yeah. dislike, angels. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't go back, right? <laughs> um, who was a, again, he, he, was a, he was a policeman, he was also an FBI agent, um, you know, real city guy, Brooklyn guy, I'm from Queens. Uh, you know, real street smart guy, and uh, World War II and Korean vet, uh, U.S. Navy. Uh, by the way, he, he tried to coax me into going to the Navy with, I would always have clean sheets to sleep on, the girls like us better, so. I didn't fall for it, Marines. Um, so I'm going back and I'm thinking of the old man the whole time, and he's like, just get your brother and get the hell out. Going to the office, I, uh, I get my brother, and I put him in front of me. And I'm like, let's go. So push him out, push him out, push him out. And my brother and I worked together for, worked with each other for over 20 years. And as brothers, we, we know the ins and outs of each other. And uh, we're heading towards the stairs. And all of a sudden, he wakes up out of his malaise and he jumps into an elevator. I go, what the, f what are you doing? He goes, no, no, he goes, uh, it'll just take us down. This is the direct line, da 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 da. And I step in the elevator, I'm like, no, I reach to grab him. And as I'm grabbing him, the lights start to flicker. I'm like, e -e -e -e. you're done. Do not say a word the rest of this, you know, God help us, and God, you know, if we get out of this shit. So I put him in front of me and we start heading down the stairs. And you know, a lot of people, a lot of questions, people are walking out, they didn't know, a lot of people didn't have the visual. They know that the building, the building shook and you know, the, 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 um, the lights were still on, again, because of 93 in, in Tower 2. I'm not sure about Tower 1, which got hit. Um, so we're walking down, we're walking down, just, you know, everybody just keep moving, you know, everybody just keep moving, it's okay, it's good. Again, we're on the 55th floor. So, uh, I think it was about the 40th, maybe 45th, the first announcement. Uh, there's been an accident, one world trade, two, two world trade is secure, go back to your offices. So, people I know went back to their offices because they had to answer that email and get that package out. So, and you know, like in any community, and by the way, I love this town. This is my new favorite town, Papa Bear. <laughs> it's a, it, the towers were a sense of community. You see the same people every day on the subways. There was a mall underneath getting your coffee. When you worked there for over 20 years, it's, uh, and you know, you don't think to say you don't go because you know, half of it you're like, well, I mean, if I didn't see what I just saw and I didn't have my brother in front of me, I would, you know, speak out. That's what you think later on. Um, and you keep going. They, they split, you keep going. So you get down to about 35th, 30th floor. Two World Trade Center secure. There's been an accident on one World Trade. Go back to your offices. More people. <laughs> More people come back. So, uh, you know, listen, I had my marching horse with my old man was, uh, to get my, uh, my brother. But, um, I haven't told this story in years. 
So, uh, you know, we figure about the 30th floor, uh, and that's when the second plane hit. And uh, had my brother, and uh, we got thrown down the stairs. And, you know, again, for you vets that were in combat, you know, I, I can only assume that there's a sense of peace and calm that comes over you and it says, that's it. Whatever happens here, I'm done. But you know what? It, it, and I've never felt it before in my life, a sense of, of just, I mean, and I remember staring at my brother. We're laying on the floor. We're looking at each other like, fuck, this is how we're going out. You know, it's a, so the building settled. Excuse my language. The building settled and uh, we got up on our feet and I got him to start moving down that stairs lickety split and there was people that couldn't, you know, that were on the side, you know, some elderly people and some ladies and, you know, you, you, you try to, you know, you try to survive and help at the same time but again, all, all I kept picturing was my old man, get that guy out of here. So it was about the 25th floor, 20th, these are all assumptions, but I guess, you know, it's, it, again, 55th, and it took a long time to get down. Um, that's when you saw the firemen hustling up, 20th, 15th, 20th floor. And, I mean, these guys are kids, and they're in bunco gear, and, you know, they're humping 100, 120 pounds easily, and it's hot, and you're smelling the oil coming down and it's getting thick. And they're saying, get to the left so they can come up the right. And uh, I mean, I'm looking at these kid, at kids, you know, whatever, young firemen. It's 343 lives. So, and again, being a cop's son, I had uncles who were firemen and, you know, where I grew up, it was very, you know, you either became a, a fireman or a cop or, you know, you know. So, um, I didn't, because I went to college. Um, and I wanted to not be a cop. <laughs> and I, 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 I give policemen out there mad, mad respect. They, those guys on the, I mean, talk about the front lines, the policemen and the firemen, so. Um, so. You know, they're, they're, they're running up, we're running down, and uh, we're just running. We're running. And you never thought you were going to get to the bottom of the staircase. Uh, finally, you did. And there was a mall underneath the Twin Towers. So where they exited us out um, was on the West Side Highway, and, the, and, and we just kind of followed the mall underneath 